fool myself on a shelf for sale I didn't get a buyer so I gave myself to a striptease dancer well, Man, I had all the answers well, Money run out and so did she I changed my scene, moved to Okeechobee and met a sugar cane mama you're watching Beyond the Band, and today Dylan and Dirt is joining me at Pell Horse Sound. So tell me about your band, because there's three guys and three guitars, and it's acoustic, and I love it. So for those of you who haven't heard of them, you got to give them a little in on what they're missing out here. So Dylan and Dirt is, yeah, <laughs> like you said, a collection of three dudes, three outlaws, like we like to call ourselves, that like to, uh, you know, put out music that speaks to us and speaks to others. Uh, we all come to, from three different backgrounds. There's 10 years apart between the three of us. So we all listen to like different types of music. I like punk rock and metal and like the old country. And these guys bring to the table what they want to share. Uh, grunge. Yeah, grunge for sure. 90s, uh, alternative country, all sorts. Pretty eclectic, so uh, just a good dynamic between the three of us. Right, and the way you guys met was Quite interesting to me. We kind of talked about that before. Yeah. Want to kind of touch on that again? But sure. Uh, so all three of us are in recovery um, from substance abuse and alcoholism. Uh, that's how we initially met in a treatment center. Uh, first words this guy ever said to me was, you play guitar? And I like, I like just came in off the street. He had his head was, on the table going, he was like this. Yeah. 130 pounds, <laughs> just... So, Operation Rio Grande before them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it just it started there and it, it grew at an alarming rate. Um, right when we got together, there was just it was like magic almost. It was just something between us. We all vibed and clicked. And there was a little room in the rehab where we all got together with these junky guitars. Yeah, yeah. And played and we just did it and did it and did it and did it. You know, and it just and then we started playing coffee houses right then. And uh, we got positive feedback, so it was like, let's just keep going. Right. So how come your first question to Evan was, do you play the guitar? Had you seen him play it before? Well, or? when I first went to Detox, um, there was a four-string guitar there, and I started playing it. And for some, and I had played back in high school. I just didn't stop. And so when I was, by the time he got in and he got in, I'd already been playing four hours a day, and I was like right on it. It was like my new thing, you know? No more heroin, we'll just go to guitar. And uh, it just, that's how it happened. And he just looked at it. He just looked like at the tower. He looks like Baby Elvis. Baby like face Elvis. Like oh, baby face Elvis. <laughs> now I'm never going to look at you the same. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. for that. You're welcome. <laughs> so was it hard for you guys? Because it seems like you guys, like you said, you just got together and started jamming on some guitars and then started playing coffee shops. It seems like you guys formed pretty well and meshed well together then. From yeah, the we started writing almost immediately. Mm. Yeah. So the cool thing was, so like I had, I had just gotten there out of being in jail for like over a year and it was like, you know, I hadn't played guitar and I was like, I found a guitar and Kenny was there and me and Kenny both lived in the same area of Florida. So we related right there and, um, you know, we're both from the East Coast and we just tell it how it is and we're just straight up with each other. And then this dude comes along and we all just start playing and it was like, I had some lyrics ready written and that's where like the name of the band Dealing in Dirt comes from. That's why I got the tattoo on my arm. Because it's more than just a band. Like I, These are like lyrics I wrote down in jail where now it's like into this. We're talking about on the TV. You guys yeah. are having us here. True. You know, where it was like at one idea, it's like you're in there in jail with some dude that you don't even know. Yeah, when I get out, man, I'm going <laughs> to change my life and make millions. Yeah. You know, but this is actually something that's coming to reality. Right. So it's cool. And it's a good message. It is. Know? Yeah. So one thing you said you wrote the lyrics for the song, is that Dylan and Dirt in jail? Yeah, is that that I did that, yeah. So it's just about like kind of how when you are dealing in dirt kind of comes from the term of like when you're just doing things that aren't just right. You're, and you're kind of hiding it. It's dirty, you know, and you're dealing in it. You know, it doesn't matter if it's drugs or like, you know, ripping people off or just lying to people, you know. And you don't feel comfortable in that. You come to a point in your life if you have some values, you don't feel comfortable in that. And you start realizing like, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm not hurting nobody but myself. But you're not. You're hurting your loved ones. You know, you're hurting. You're causing a lot of chaos and wreckage. You know, and it's kind of finding ownership in that and finding some freedom in it, too. So it's That's pretty cool. Song, yeah. yeah. That show right there. I was going to say, you bring a good point of taking ownership of it. And one thing that you mentioned that I really like is when you're 
doing stuff like that, you, you really don't. You don't realize that you're hurting people. You think yeah. it's just, it's me, I can do whatever, whatever. It doesn't affect anybody, but in the long run, it does, whether you realize it or not. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. once you get that mindset yeah. switch, you're like, so, like, that's why, I mean, I do outreach. We try to help. But, like, me and this guy work for the rehab that we went through. So it's pretty cool now when you come out on the other side and you can, uh, you know, help others. Right. right. As well. Pull so, them out of the hole we were in. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and we try to do that with music, too. Yeah. Good. So music's a good outlet for you as well as for helping others. So. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. 100%. Is there anybody else that you've seen have success with that, then? With music? Yes. Like in kind of similar situation as you guys. Um, what's his name? Philip Denton. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He Shout out. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> Philip Denton. Um, he actually has a whole CD about the 12 steps of recovery. Really? Yeah. Um, he's on Lumberjack Tracks. Okay. You can find him on Facebook. Sweet. So uh, shout out, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome that you guys take something, you know, your past and develop songs out of it and share it with everybody. And one thing that you mentioned, um, your song, Dylan and Dirt, you talk about like grain, thunder, all this stuff. And then you talk about reveal the sinner. Mm-hmm. And I really like that because it's like everybody, to each their own, everybody has a sin or, you know, an obstacle or something. And I feel like people are so quick to point the finger at everybody else, but not at themselves. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's and, the truth. And that's where I was saying you find the freedom in it when you can kind of let that go. It doesn't have power over you anymore. You know, you're, you're being, everyone wants to use this word transparent, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's try to start living a transparent life then, you know? And it's surprising how people are like, when you are revealing, how accepting they can be. And, uh, you know, and how a lot of times, you, you know, you can help others with your own story. So you don't even realize it. Right. Let's talk about another song, Striptease Dancer. I wrote that one in 15 minutes. Really? (laughs) All the good ones are like quick writes. Yeah. It took 15 minutes to write. It's about Florida. Uh Uh-huh. And and Kurt and I got talking one day about Florida, and I just, I went home and and, and wrote a song. I said, hey, you know, actually I wasn't home, I was at the laundromat. (laughs) And I came up with this lick, and and I'm like, you know what, that's a good, that's a good country lick. And... It's just about, it's about a little journey through, a quick journey through Florida, which took nine years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a From beginning to end, you know, it's just a, that's just a how I, the way, the way, the way we roll. Yeah. You know, that's the way we rolled. I, I rolled that way. <clears throat> Not good. Dirty. <laughs> Dirty, you know. I think everybody has points but, like that. Uh, it's got a good ending, you know, it's got a good, right. the whole Yeah. Story. It's the best line in the song, is it? <laughs> What's just the name? best line? The end, you'll hear it when we play it. Okay. And we then, just name drop a lot of cool stuff in Florida. I was going to say Daytona. I heard Daytona in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it actually it actually goes basically in the story. It goes from... It goes from... The Keys. The right? Keys. From, it goes from like, really Tampa to the Keys and back up north. And so it's totally a journey then. Yeah. It's a little journey, yeah. Quick Thanks. one. Yeah. Another song I want to hit on real quick is Shots for the Devil. Ooh, that's oh, good. Yeah. We've been playing that one a little bit. Yeah, too. that one's old. That one's like, at least two years old. Um, that came straight shit. out of when we were in rehab. Yeah, together. that is that is the track one song. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, I don't know how I wrote that one. I can't really remember. Um, I was listening to a lot of this band called The Devil Makes Three. Mm-hmm. It's like still one of my favorites, but at that point in time, that's like all I was listening to. Um, so I was coming up like the style of guitar I was playing is kind of similar. Uh, but yeah, it's uh. It's almost a similar thing. It's like a journey yeah, through. Journey. It's a journey through part of my <laughs> life uh, where I accepted like the sins I was doing, and it was like, "I'll you know, I'll see you in hell." You people say that, like, "I'll save you, seat in hell." Right. It's basically like that. Um, like I know I'm I'm doing wrong, and I don't I don't give a fuck. Right. <laughs> but, uh, pretty much. One thing that I liked. One of the lyrics was "All for a shot," and then able himself yeah. to like. I don't know that line. Right, and then drink to our health. Yeah, it's very powerful, so. I can see it in my head. Right? (laughs) (laughs) The devil just taking shots. Drinking moonshine. Drinking moonshine. (laughs) So what did you guys say to listeners or anybody out there who's, you know, struggling or needs help with anything? Because clearly you guys had your outlet through music. What what else helped you guys keep going and think positive? You can make your dreams a reality. Mm Mm-hmm. Do the right, do the next right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're using it and you need help, go to a meeting. 
meet somebody, meet 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 people like us, because it, it's a it's a pretty good it's a good community here in Salt Lake, yeah. and it's very strong. And if you really want to help yourself and get into it, then you can do it. Shit, yeah. Shit, yeah. It's all about willingness. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think too, it's important to find someone who's also willing to you know keep pushing and is in the same mindset as you too. Yeah. So association as well is a big key. But I like what you guys are doing and I like that you guys, you know, take all these crazy past experiences and throw them into songs and that it's acoustic and just three guitars and you guys just jamming. Yeah. Layering. A lot of layering. Yeah, that's we a, that, that part of it comes natural. It's yeah. weird. It we don't has. our goal is to not be doing the same thing on guitar mm -hmm. as the next guy. So we kinda of layer different sounds and well, you gotta know chords and arpeggios and, and licks. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just, it's the cool thing is about with playing with people that you know, um, you learn each other's styles somewhat, but then it's like, a, it's kind of like a game, like puzzle pieces. Like, yeah. you, I'll, I'll be straight up, it's like, you know, this little trick's gonna work right here. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And another thing is that, is I, you know, I was pretty fresh when I came in, so I got, I learned from both these guys, so I, I got a little both of them in me, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and so it, I think that's what, makes, I, you know, it really, it really makes it easy to play with these guys. That's good. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for joining us on Beyond the Band. Thank you. Thank Thanks you to guys. our viewers, yeah. and once again, shout out to Greg and letting Hell us yeah, use Greg, his yeah. studio here Thank at Pell or Sound. We'll catch you guys next time on the next Beyond the Band. Shoveling boy from when I was younger Or if my soul had gone to the fiery gates of hell And I feel 